Pastor Rock, episode three. I'm here with uh, Houston Texans, Charles Amenahu. What's good, man? What's good, bro? How you doing? I'm doing good. How you been? Man, I've been good, brother. Just trying to keep keep working while we're going through this pandemic. Um, ain't much, too much to do, you know what I'm saying? So. All right, man. Uh, I guess we're just going to go right into it. Uh, so for, you know, my first question for you, um, pretty broad, but it's pretty straightforward at the same time. So what made you, like, why football in general? Like, what made you choose football? <clears throat> um, so, so, like, I was introduced um, to it by my dad. He was watching it, and he kind of was like, yo, sit down, like, and watch this, kind of. And I started, it just, I it just drew it. I just drew attention to it just for the, the entertainment they gave me and things like that. And I was like, yo, I'm going to be able to do this. So um, in 2000, I started playing football in 2006. Um, my dad put me into Pee Wee football. And to start off, I, I really wasn't that good, man. Like, I was small. I wasn't the biggest guy. And, um, you know what I'm saying, I went through Pee Wee. Um, was on a couple good, really good teams. Kind of learned the concept of this team and, um, learning more about football and being more of a football junkie. Um, and then that's just how it kind of went off from there. What's up? That's what's up. So, uh, you know, you stated, you said you weren't like, at least you said you weren't that good at first. So at one point in time, did you know, like, yeah, like I'm going to make it like with football? Um, my sophomore in college is when I knew, I think I had real like ideas, like, you know what I'm saying? I can make it to the NFL. Um, what really set off my junior year, my junior year, I knew I was going to go to the NFL. My junior year college, I knew I was going to go. Sophomore year, I had kind of, you know what I'm saying, ruffles in my head. But um, my junior year, I definitely knew I was going to the NFL. All right, so uh, I'm going to backtrack real quick. So, like, back to so back to high school, um, you had several offers from, you know, from schools like Texas, Texas Tech. Um, you had some offers from Oregon, schools like that. So – what um why Texas? Like what made Texas stand out above other schools? Um, I remember I took a junior day visit to the University of Texas and I just felt like I was at home. I just felt like the atmosphere, the coaches, the opportunity to play, the coaches at the time, um, the opportunity to play was really good. And I just liked the of being built over there. So um I remember I just had this gut feeling like this is the school I need to be at. This is where I need to go, and it ended up being the right decision at the end of the day. Um, so, just so you got, you know, you got drafted April twenty seventh, twenty nineteen. Um, yeah. So, just take me back to that day. Like, what was, how was that feeling when you heard your name called? Um, it was incredible, bro. It was an incredible feeling, dream come true, something I've been working for since I was six, seven years old. Um. Waited too long, but it's all God's plan, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just was hella excited, very nervous, nerve wracking, though, uh, especially that I thought I was gonna be drafted day two. So, wait, having to wait till day three, um, fifth pick, uh, fifth round pick, pick 161, was just, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, it pissed me off a lot, but it gave me a lot of motivation, a lot of hunger, a lot of drive to kind of prove everybody wrong. And um, that's kind of what I've, I've built my whole career on is proving people wrong. And that's what kind of I, I fed on. And when I do, just my confidence goes up and up and up and up. So it was just another, just, that was just another obstacle, something that was put in my way to give me the, the chip on the shoulder that I need. Oh, man. And uh, just, just like you said, proving people wrong with you, I mean, we saw you do it like this past season. I mean, your second game, you got that strip sack. Uh, like, mm -hmm. how was that? Like, how was that? Like, how that that whole experience? Like, that transition from going from Texas to like straight up NFL football. Like, how was that? Um, the strip sack just let me know that if you can do it once, you can do it a hundred times. You just gotta put your mind to it. You gotta put the, like your craft to it. And so, 
I really tried dialing on that. Um, but the, the the jump was just like everybody's really good. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to find a scallywag. You ain't going to – it's not going to be any easy matchup. You're going to have to really put your best foot forward. And that's what the kind of jump is um, to me. It was just like I'm not the best guy on the field right now. But, you know what I'm saying, with work, dedication, things like that, I can be. I mean, so that's what's up, man. Like, speaking on the NFL, um, you know, y'all made it to the playoffs uh, and y'all lost to the Chiefs. Like, take me back to that playoff experience. Like, you know, a lot of like a lot of rookies don't get to play in the, in the playoffs their first year. But, you know, like, that was something you got to experience. Like, how was that for you? And, like, how was, like, I guess, how was, like, the good and the bad parts for you? Um, the bad, I started with the bad. I missed two sacks in the playoffs. Um so that was something that, like, I relive in my head and just think over, man, as I'm working. Uh, anytime I feel tired or feel like not finishing up a rep, like, I just think about those two sets. And I'm like, that's missed opportunity. So you got to work. You can't you can't let those kind of opportunities just um, go by the wayside. But um, the good was I made plays. I mean, I did I made, I made did things in the playoffs. Um, I got experience, like you said, experience and, like, Playoffs, NFL playoff football is crazy, man. Like, it's it's wild. There's a whole bunch of energy. Um, things are – little mistakes are, are – like, the, the magnitude of them is the expanding. It's, it's, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? So having that experience is good. Um, having success and, like, getting close to taste of success was good. Um, the Chiefs game was crazy. Um, horrible way to end, but um, an experience nonetheless and something that you – as a team, we can go back on and be like, um, we got that far, that close to being going to a championship game. What can we do to improve that? And then not be in a situation where we fumble a 24 or nothing lead. Um, so uh, just, you know, back in the, in the NFL. So like when you got there, you know, would you say there's any, I'll say teammates, maybe coaches on your team that you say really like guided you? like? in the NFL as you got in? Whitney Merciless, um, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, those are two guys. I always I, I would talk to Cam Jordan a lot. Alex Okafor. Those are guys that kind of just helped me. You know what I'm saying? Tried to guide me and stuff like that. Um, JJ along uh, towards the end. Um, Deshaun Watson. So those are guys that kind of helped me throughout my rookie experience. So, uh, you know, a lot of like, you know, seeing a lot of interviews, a lot of uh, a lot of players, like professional players, like they say, like, you know, just playing with people they watch on TV, some of them growing up, um, you know, some of them just, you know, being in college. Like, how was it like playing alongside with like J.J. Watt and, you know, being teammates with Deshaun Watson and people like that? Like, how was that for you? Was it like, like I say a big transition or like a big change or was it like something you were like accustomed to? Accustomed to, bro, because at the end of the day, we all we all on the one shield. It's just those guys have had success like I have, like I did in college. I just haven't had that same success in the league yet. So it is what it is, bro. We are, we are, we are human. We just, you know, what I'm saying, athletes at the end of the day. And you know, what I'm saying, you got, you got to compete and work with those guys. You can't be, you know, what I'm saying, talking about some oh, this is my teammate, this is my teammate. Like, that it doesn't really matter. Oh, man. Uh, I man. I'll say so. Being in the NFL, I know you have some like I know you have you had good and bad experiences, but what would you say was your like top three experiences like or top three top three moments in the league since you've been in there? All three of my sacks. Um the worst moment was missing sacks. Those were the worst. And then losing um in that playoff game. But yeah, the top three was the three sacks I had this year. And then worse were the ones, like the five that I missed this year, last year. So just want to reprimand that and, you know what I'm saying, find a way to capitalize on those things. Because if I do, <laughs> sky's the limit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, growing up playing football, I would assume that you probably had a few football icons that you looked up to. Um, was there really any, like, any specific like top football players that like you always looked up to growing up, like retired or in the league right now? Um, I really like Demarcus Ware. It's crazy that I work with him now, but Demarcus Ware is a guy that I, I used to watch a lot. Um, 
I used to watch little highlights of um, what's the Giants defensive end? Wow, I can't believe I'm going blank. But he was number fifty eight for the Giants way back. Really good defensive lineman. Um, going into the league, I watched Clowney a lot. Von Miller. So those are guys kind of I would watch. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'm going to, like, tread away from, like, football in the NFL and, like, talk about uh, – or finally talk about, you know, something, you know, going on right now. I mean, everyone's familiar with, like, the Black Lives Matter movement going on. And, mm-hmm. uh, like, I would just say, like, I mean, we, we all seen, like, the reality of the things happening. Like, so, like, like what are, what are, like, your thoughts on, like, all these things happening, like, in general? Like, like, what, what, like what do you see about them? I mean, I think – the biggest thing with how black people are treated towards the police has always been the thing. Um, I just hope that people continue to push for that, even if there's no more videos that surface out. That's been my biggest thing is that, uh, yeah, topic conversation happens when something happens, but if it's really real, something that's a real concern, it'll continue to be pushed um, regardless if it's a topic of conversation at the time. Um, but I mean, everything that's, everything that's been going on is real. It's a real thing. And it's something that, um, I hope that can, the voice doesn't get, doesn't get tuned down and it, it continues to be something that's re- irrelevant and prevalent in people's minds. So that can be changed. For real. Cause I mean, you know, just looking at everything happening, like we're only lucky like in 2020 because we see media and stuff like back in the day, there was nothing like there was no camera, like all these were just happening. But, like, I mean, it is good to see, you know, people in the league and people who have the platform to, like, you know, stand up and, like, use what they have to, you know, stand for a lot of these things. But um, I guess um, my last uh, question for you would just be, like, take me back to that senior year at at Texas because that's when you went crazy that year for sure. You know, you were, like, Big 12 defensive lineman of the year, you know, all team Big 12, all first team Big 12. Uh, So, like, how was that for you? Like, what, like, what got that drive going, like, that year? Bro, I can't lie to you, dude. I don't – I worked hard. That's one thing I will say. I worked extremely hard that my junior year offseason because I, it was a make it or break kind of deal for me. Um, so I worked hard, bro. Um, I studied hard. I did all the extra things. And I, and I did extra after practice. Like, I wanted to make an impact. But – um, the game that really sparked everything wasn't even USC when I got finally on my first sack after three games was really Kansas State. And that's when, like, people ask me about that. Like, I, I don't know who, what got over me, bro. And I truly believe it was God. Like, it was God that was, like, literally guiding everything I did on that field to where, like, I was sometimes unstoppable. Um, I can't forget. I remember Tech. When we played Tech, um, I had did something, and, like, I told my coach, I was like, I'm going to go end the game. And y'all lucky because they told me that I didn't – that I stripped uh, Dudley, but they were trying to say his hand went forward when it really didn't. But, like, just, like, things like that, like, I would be like, hey, I'm about to do this, and I will do it. And it would be so easy. It would be so effortless. I just felt like I was in another playing field than everybody else. And so <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a crazy time. A crazy experience, something that like I really can't pinpoint, but just say like God was the one that was guiding me, and I, I just hope that that happens in the league because if it does, you know what I'm saying, going to be making hell, a lot of money. But um, I think it will because I, I have that same drive, same work ethic, um, and yeah, bro, my senior was crazy, bro. It was it was something to remember. I know UT fans remember. I know people just in general remember that shit because um, people still talk to me about it to today, but. It was, it was it was it was legendary for sure. Yeah, man, definitely it was, but you know, it definitely wasn't fun for us Red Raiders watching that happen to us. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you, man, for you know uh, coming on this podcast, man. Uh, you know, we definitely wish you luck this coming up uh, upcoming season. You know, you're gonna eat. I uh, appreciate you for hopping on, man. Um, but uh, thank y'all for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, and then you know, be on the lookout for this man because he's a beast. But uh, appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, brother. Hey, this the podcast thing is good, bro. Keep it going, man. I will, man. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir.